Welcome to this Australian premiere screening of the latest production from Hollywood depicting a very dark time in Ottoman Turkey at the turn of the last century. Hello, my name is George Denikian. The time I'm alluding to saw more than one and a half million Armenians, 750,000 Pontic Greeks and a little over half a million Assyrians lose their lives. For the past 100 years, successive Turkish governments have said they were simply putting down a revolution. I beg to differ. I say it was genocide. And to suggest that all three groups have lied over the years and even colluded to tell the same story about what happened is both unimaginable and grotesque. I know that The Promise is a movie and not meant to be a historical record of events, but much of it did occur. How can I be so sure? Well, I've heard the account of what went on in Turkey firsthand. You see, I'm the grandson of a survivor. His name was Ashot Donikyan, who lost many family members during the purge. He survived by jumping into the sea in Smyrny and swimming towards three warships from France, Great Britain and Italy, which were stationed in the harbour at the time. He was being chased by a posse of Turkish soldiers who were trying to shoot him. The sailors on board tried to stop him from climbing onto their vessels by first pouring hot water onto him. The British then fired a volley above his head to ward him off as they didn't want to risk their neutrality. However, it was the Italians who relented after they realised his plight and they eventually took him to the island of Lesbos, to Mytilini. And from there, my grandfather eventually made it to Athens where he married and settled down to raise a family. Many years later, growing up in Sydney, my great-grandmother Marise, who had left Greece in 1949 with my father to come to Australia, would speak to me of those terrible times and just how difficult it had been, not only for her, but many thousands of others who had lost so much. She spoke of being forced into a, into a long march out of Turkey. She would tell me of the nights filled with screams and blood-curdling cries for help. Marise would talk of the horror that filled her in the mornings when she discovered what had truly happened overnight. She spoke of confronting and terrible images when the women went down to the river to gather water. The rivers still running red with blood and bodies of the dead floating by. Growing up, I often wondered why my great grandmother would tell me these terrible stories. And as I got older, I decided to find out for myself. I spoke to my grandfather and he showed me a diary he'd kept, a graphic book, unbelievable stories. I even researched some of what went on at the time myself and quickly realised that Marise had taken this opportunity to tell her story to me. And it was an open portal to an oral history that couldn't be challenged and shouldn't be lost, which is why I'm passing it on to you tonight. I stand before you as the elder son of Andranik and Vivian Donikian. My father passed away last October. He was just 89. He would have loved to be here tonight, especially to hear me invoke the names of the family members who have since passed. All brave Armenians who had made every effort to pass on their story so that those who follow would know what happened. For many of us, tonight's screening will be very painful. But I think it's better to experience the pain now than to keep denying that these things ever happened, as the Turkish governments have done from day one. You know, as an original member of the SBS World News team, I'm ashamed to see that our multicultural broadcaster has chosen to call what happened at the turn of the 20th century not a genocide, because it says it's following the Australian government's official stance. Now, I understand very well the subtleties of politics, but I think it's even more important to tell the truth. And to those who say, what do you expect from George? He's of Armenian and Greek heritage after all. I should add, my wife and I have many Turkish friends who I work with and have worked on many different projects. And these people have extended the hand of friendship to me on a great many occasions. And many are like extended family members. My argument is not with them, it's directed at their leaders, the people who have chosen collectively to rewrite history. I know it's said that much of history has been written by the victors, but I want to leave you with this. Please read widely about the events that took place. Take in the many independent accounts from academics, from scholars, and even neutrals in Turkey at the time. Many have spent years weighing up this evidence. Expediency surrounds this passage of history. 
for it's far easier to leave things as they are. Imagine if Australia were to stand up and actually say it was a genocide. They might have to wave goodbye to its Gallipoli traditions and all the goodwill that surrounds the Anzac legend. I say both governments are at fault. The stance they've taken is wrong. And as for the SBS, well, my mentor Bruce Ginger would be deeply disappointed as his SBS had much more license to say what was right in 1980 and not just what was easy. I'd like to take a moment to thank the team at Palace Cinemas for helping to make this screening possible tonight right across 40 theatres in Australia. And before I finish, once again, I'm George Denikian and I promise never to forget.